we will we will move on uh, to the closing speech. Yeah, it's a bit sad to say it like this, but it's going to be very interesting as we will now welcome Dragos Pislaru. I hope I pronounced that well. You are a member of the European Parliament and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anlor. Um, I would like to, to start by thanking so much the international sign interpreters. So uh, I really appreciate that. Your effort is really appreciated. And I'm, I'm so glad when I have this opportunity to attend conferences that are about accessibility. And, and this shows uh, the alignment that you are having actually with uh, you know, the linking between social and inclusiveness. And I would like to congratulate you for that. I would also like to you know, begin by thanking the Surf Rider Foundation Europe and the French Ministry of Sports for organizing this conference, for bringing us all together and for giving us the opportunity to discuss and exchange ideas and, and success stories. And that's inspiring. You know, it's about a topic that has an impact both for our present, but most importantly, I think that that's one thing that I can say for our future. And when, when I think about green outdoor sports, I, I, I picture an image of you know, jogging in the park, hiking in the woods, swimming in the lake or sailing on the sea. I've been sailing for, you know, I'm starting from six years old and I, I've been in national and even the world championship on that. And this has been actually an integral part of my life. And whenever I was actually seeing uh, plastic bags or other kind of things on the sea, I mean, that was not necessarily the kind of picture that I wished to have. And the only thought is that this reality, uh, you know, may, may be different in the future, can, can be by far worse. So we need to, to act. This is essential to act not now actually and stop the, the accelerated pace at which our natural habitat is being de degraded. And in ecology, I mean, shows us that, that all natural environments are intrinsically connected. We are inter, in an interconnected world and system. Uh, and, and again, we are seeing the reality that is drifting further and further away from an integrated ecosystem. We produce at the price and we consume at the price, but the cost of environmental degradation will not be seen or experienced by us, uh, but by our future generations. So this is a question of legacy, so I cannot, I could not agree more with what Theo, Mathieu, and many other panelists have said during this conference about the importance of respecting and reconnecting with nature, especially when doing sport. And the image of jogging in a deserted park or swimming in a sea full of plastic, it's again, not something that we want our children to have when thinking about outdoor sports. To avoid this, we need to think about the sustainability of our actions and to make sure that we meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. And when I'm saying that, I, I mean, I'm <laughs> talking from my personal example, I have four kids, all boys, and I just wow. really need to have a legacy that would be completely different. And I, I mean, just to, to, to move right, right now, very briefly at, at European Union level, um, given my position in the European Parliament, I, I think that the European Union has actually put very clear that green sport is a priority and was actually added as a key point um, on the EU work plan for sport 2021-2024. And that was together with the importance dedicated to have a you know, long-term sustainable strategy for sport facilities and major sporting events. And this is about education, modernization, evolution, the light of climate change. And this is part of the overall framework that is linked to the European climate law. And I will very briefly touch three pillars, environmental, economic, and social. Um, and, and again, beyond that, we have the transformative power and added, added value that sport can bring to any one of these three pillars. The environmental pillar, you know, it's clear. Sport depends on healthy environment. And, and again, we re really need a holistic coordinated approach to innovate uh, more sustainable products. And we call on athletes to, to help in promoting these initiatives as Ms. Yanotova rightly said yesterday, the greening of sports should not be treated as an add-on, but as a strategic goal uh, towards we can all work uh, and run together. The economic pillar, very briefly, sport is actually providing significant economic benefits all over the world uh, through different sports events, broadcasting, commercialization of fan club articles, and so on. At EU level, we are very aware, however, that you know, the sports sector was severely hit by the current pandemic. And this is why we have right now a lot of EU programs that are available to finance sports activities. Erasmus Plus, European Solidarity Corps, European Social Fund Plus, and EU for Health. And most importantly, the, the, the program where I was actually a co-rapporteur 
you know, RRF, Recovery and Resilience Facility, and the Child Guarantee, uh, another important uh, project for me. And I would like to congratulate the panelists who have presented the projects they have worked to promote, promote the greening of sports, such as the Blue, Heat, uh, Blue Health Organizations to Protect the Oceans and Green Sports Hub Europe, both funded actually by Erasmus Plus uh, program. And by working together, we can, we can actually do this kind of really good initiatives and, and, and spread them. And third, the last pillar, the social pillar. I, I mean, this is really a key aspect close to my heart as part of, as, as coordinator of Renew Europe in, in the Employment and Social Affairs Committee. And this is about how sports can shape the wider society, you know, because sport promotes and teaches values such as mutual respect and understanding, solidarity, fairness, cooperation and civic engagement, uh, you know, fostering societal cohesion. So I strongly believe in that. And we think that we need to interact with children more, you know, the children that are vulnerable, belonging to less privileged community. And we need to do that through sport. We can initiate a dialogue against social inequalities and uh, promoting the inclusiveness of sport um, I, I really believe that it's uh, you know, critical for the policy of leaving no one behind in this process of change, development, and sustainability that we are putting uh, forward. Uh, Mesdames, Messieurs, pour conclure, je suis très convaincu que le sport contribuera à la réalisation des priorités générales de l'Union européenne. Mais pour cela, nous devons travailler ensemble. Nous avons besoin d'une évaluation structurelle et claire sur l'impact de nos actions sur cette planète. Nous avons besoin d'encourager la société à avoir un comportement plus durable. Nous avons besoin tout d'abord d'échanger de, de, des idées, des de bonnes pratiques entre nous et travailler ensemble pour avoir un impact positif sur l'environnement. Le sport a le pouvoir d'unir. Il a le pouvoir de, de, de supprimer les différences et de promouvoir l'inclusion. Lorsqu'il est également utilisé pour promouvoir la durabilité et servir de catalyseur à la transition écologique, le sport peut véritablement devenir une force, une force du bien. Nous savons déjà que le sport peut avoir un impact sur la vie de millions de personnes. Faisons en sorte que cet impact soit positif et durable. Je vous remercie beaucoup et je vous félicite. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was very inspiring. Hopefully, the, the future generation will have a, a better planet to, to live on and have the opportunity to do sports in clean oceans, in, on mountains full of snow. Let's hope that. Thank you so much, uh, Dragos Pislaru. Thank you for your participation. Thanks to you who followed us for two days. A very spe special thank you to Amandine Sangla from the Ministry of Sports, the French Ministry of Sport. A uh, warm, warm thank you to Yann Lemarie and Clara Olivier, who actually prepared everything. They made this possible with Remy Touja without who I couldn't be talking to you today. Uh, thank you to Mina Cantone, Lionel Chelu, Cyril Dufault, and the agency BCW. Thank you so much to all of you. Hope you've learned a lot of things, just I, I did. I hope to see you soon and take care of our planet. A big thank you to the translators. I was about to forget you, François Xavier. Benedict uh, and our fabulous team of uh, translators into the, the international sign language. Uh, I think we can see Maha is still here with us. Look at the, the drawing. Thank you very much, Maha Kalaert. She was from, she, she was from, she is from Visuality. She was our graphic facilitator during this conference. A warm thank you to all of you. Bye-bye. Hope to see you soon. I hope I didn't forget anybody. <laughs>